Hi everyone, I'm Steve Petch. I'm the lead pastor at Welcome Church, which is a Christian church based in Woking, England. Thank you so much for joining us for our online meeting today. I really hope that this time together blesses you, encourages you, and you're able to connect with God as well. While this crisis is going on, you can find out everything that we're doing online as a church by going to our website, which is allwelcome.uk. There's lots of things happening. We'd love you to connect with them. And then once this crisis is over, I'd love to meet you in person as well. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoy this, this meeting. And I'm now going to hand over to our meeting host. Thank you. Hi, I'm Doug. And it is a real pleasure to be able to introduce our second ever Welcome Church online today. I am so grateful at this time of social distancing that we have the technology to be able to bring church right to you in your front room. If you're watching this as part of a watch party, feel free to get involved. Why don't you click on emojis? Why don't you put your comments? It'd be great for you to be interactive with us this morning. You're welcome also to, to set up your own watch party and invite others to join you. This morning is going to last for just under an hour and it's going to do you good this morning. We're going to hear a great message from Steve Petch, our lead pastor, about how we can deal with anxieties and how we can know strength and peace from God at this time. We're also going to, later on, give you some ways that you can connect with us at Welcome Church. We want you to know that we are with you and for you at this time. But first, we are going to hear a great worship song about God knowing all about us and how we can cast all our worries on him. This song has been recorded by Joe and Owen, members of our brilliant worship band. And this song will do you and I good. So won't you sit back, relax, enjoy this time together. First of all, I'm gonna pray for us. Father God, thank you that you know us. You know every one of us. You know our thoughts, our worries, our insecurities, and you have strength and peace for all of us. I pray for every one of us that you would help us to place our trust in you in a greater way this morning, and we would know your strength and your peace. In Jesus' name, amen. It's clear to see It's constant every day In the morning In the morning You sing over me And I receive your mercy Your faithfulness is clear to see Every day Every breath I breathe An invitation To believe you are creating Something good Though this season doesn't tell my story I know you'll move mountains for me You're just that Just that good, so I'll give that. 
Wasn't that song just a great encouragement to us, reminding us that God is faithful. He knows us and we can place our trust in him at this time. In fact, the Bible tells us, cast all your anxieties on God for he cares for you. Before we finish this morning, we're going to tell you how you can connect further with Welcome Church. We're with you and for you at this time. But now I'm really pleased to introduce our lead pastor, Steve Petch, as he brings us a great message about how we can deal with anxieties and know peace with God at this time. Thanks for joining us today. I'm Steve Petch. I'm the lead pastor at Welcome Church here in Woking in England. And it is hard to believe that just two weeks ago, our church met here together in this building. And today it's empty. The government have told us that we must stay at home, except for a very limited set of circumstances. And on that note, I do just want to reassure you about what I'm doing here in our building. On Tuesday, the government gave really clear guidance to everybody about what buildings should and shouldn't stay open. In that list, there was some real detail for places of worship, which is us. And we are actually allowed to open for three reasons. We're allowed to open for funerals, as long as we keep social distance, which uh, obviously is not something we want to think about too much yet at this point, but important to know. Um, We're allowed to open for solitary prayer, though we won't do that at the moment because we're doing our prayers online. Do join us on Zoom twice a day, Monday to Friday, and also on Saturday. We'll be online. Do join us. Love as many of you as possible to come and pray with us online. And the third reason we're allowed to open, which we're delighted about, is we are allowed to live stream our meetings, um, and so recording for streaming, as long as there's no congregation present, which there isn't. So I'm here with one other person who's operating the camera, We're keeping our social distance because neither of us wants to catch or spread this horrible disease. So that's what we're doing. Just wanted to reassure you about that and that it is okay to do it. Now, it was really distressing this week to watch scenes from Italy and from Spain um, and and the death rate to see that shooting up. And hey, it may go the same way here. I don't entirely know what to expect, but we saw this week the government announce a new temporary hospital in London, the NHS Nightingale Hospital, 4,000 beds. It does make you wonder about what's ahead. I mean, retired doctors and nurses have been asked to return to service. Student doctors and nurses are also being deployed and we take our hats off to everybody working in that area thank you so much i'm aware of um, a friend who leads a church it's part of our commission family they've been asked to consider whether they would be willing to turn their building into a hospital or mortuary if it should become needed these are really different times that we are living in at the moment and with that in mind it's no surprise to me that one of the biggest issues that people are talking about at the moment is anxiety There's a lot to be anxious about, but what I want to talk about this morning is defeating our anxiety, and I believe that God can help us to get free from that anxiety and to live with a greater level of peace. So that's what we're going to talk about this morning. Now, last week I talked about defeating fear, and can I just encourage you, if you missed last week's talk, to get hold of that. But anxiety is not the same as fear. So fear, when we face it, tends to be really in our face. And I likened it to being like a giant. And it's something you you just can't miss fear. It can paralyze you. It can cause you to make crazy decisions. It can cause you to run away. Fear can be a big issue. Anxiety is a little bit different to that. Anxiety tends to be much less in our face than fear is. Anxiety is something we can have and perhaps even not fully realise that we're anxious. It can be something that's gnawing away in the background of our lives, like a quiet but perhaps unwanted presence. It can be like a knot in our stomach, a tension in our jaw. It's like we're carrying around a sick feeling with us or something like that. Maybe you've experienced that at the moment. Let me ask you to think for a moment about anxiety. What are you anxious about at the moment? Is there anything that's really causing you anxiety? I mean, for example... It might be that you or someone you love is working in the National Health Service right now and so really in contact daily with what's going on. And uh, that could cause us to be concerned because of the risk it poses. Or it might be that you're involved in another area, another essential kind of professional job that's going on at the moment and really you'd just rather be at home where you might feel safer. Uh, Or or maybe there's someone that you love and care about who's ill or you're worried that the virus could harm your family. Or maybe you've got worries about money or your job. Will it still exist? Will he have enough money to get by? If you do have enough to get by, will there be any food in the shops to buy? These are really big issues for us. I want you to know today that Jesus understood human anxiety. 
I want to read some words of Jesus from the Bible. This is from Matthew chapter 6, verse 25 to 34. As I read them, let them speak to your heart today. Therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his life? And why are you anxious about clothes? Consider the lilies of the field and how they grow. They neither toil nor spin, yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. If this is how God clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the pagans seek after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you as well. Therefore do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Do you know, one of the really wonderful things about God is that he doesn't sit remote and distant from human experience. Because in Jesus... God became a man and he lived a human life with all of its ups and downs. And so Jesus addresses our anxiety, but he does it as a human being. God became a man and he sat with us and spoke to us. And Jesus addressed anxiety. And he does it in this passage by pointing us to some spiritual realities that exist beyond anything that we can see. Now, I want to use an illustration today to help me, and it's the illustration of a painting And I'm told by people who are artists, I have to say I'm not one, but you might be, I'm told by people who are artists that if you want to paint a beautiful landscape picture, you start with the background, not with the foreground. So before you put in trees and and flowers and grass, they're putting in the sky. So often landscape painters will start by painting a blue wash on the canvas and then they'll build layers up on top of that. And in the end, an amazing painting emerges like this one that I want to show you now. This painting, I found it this week, it's called The Lonely Tree. And it was painted in 1822 by a man called Caspar David Frederick. I think I've said that properly. Our lives right now, by the way, may feel a little bit like that lonely tree. Maybe you feel like that just on my own in this landscape, especially if you have been at home on your own and you're kind of self-isolating and quarantining with nobody else around you. Now, the artist didn't paint the oak tree first. Just look at the painting. He didn't paint the oak tree first and then fill in the sky and the mountains around it. No, no, the background came first. And the thing that draws our focus, the tree, the lonely tree for which the painting is named, was one of the last things I would guess to go in. Now, in the same way, our lives have both a foreground and a background. The foreground of our lives is the things that are right in front of us and that we most quickly focus on, the things that are causing us anxiety right now. And the background is the eternal spiritual reality that our lives are built on. Now, in a painting, the background has a particular function, and its function is to give the whole thing perspective. And if we're full of anxiety right now, if you or I are just carrying it around, one reason may be because we're not seeing our lives in true perspective. Jesus wants us to see our lives with an eternal perspective. This world is not really our home. If all we focus on is the foreground of our problems and our concerns, the things that are immediately in front of us, then we are losing sight of the eternal dimension. And we could be missing the true perspective that Jesus wants us to have. And so Jesus in this, in this passage is helping us to put everything into a proper perspective. He's, he's making us lift our eyes from like, like the tree in the front of the painting to the mountains and the, and the hills and the sky behind. He's helping us to see the big perspective. He's wanting to lift our eyes from the foreground of our immediate worries to see that there is an eternal dimension to life and that God is watching over us. Now, of course, the foreground of our lives right now is pretty obvious. I mean, there's a global pandemic going on. I'm sure you've noticed. We're quarantined at home. Schools are shut. Travel is cancelled. Weddings are off. Holidays are off. Global finances are shaky. Jobs are at risk. One of my relatives is already now unemployed because of this. And the virus could strike down someone we love to make it all worse. That's the foreground of our lives right now. If you like, that's the thing that's drawing our focus, like the tree in that painting. But it is just the foreground. We need to know that there is a wonderful background to our lives as well. There is an eternal perspective that God wants us to have. 
Do you know that God has given amazing promises over your life and mine? There are eternal realities that put all of these challenges that we're facing into a different perspective. And that's what Jesus points us to in this passage. He's not dismissing the foreground of our lives and the problems. He's wanting us to lift our eyes and to see the bigger picture and to see our lives against eternity. So Jesus starts off in this passage by telling us not to be anxious. He says it three times. Let me read it to you. First of all, verse 25, he says, Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life and what you'll eat and what you'll drink or about your body and what you'll put on. And in case we weren't listening, he says it a second time. Do not be anxious saying, what shall we eat, what shall we drink or what shall we wear? That's verse 31. And then in verse 34, a third time, do not be anxious about tomorrow for each day has enough trouble of its own. Now, I want to acknowledge that sometimes people have a kind of medical anxiety uh, and prescription medication can really help and reset our brain chemistry. But right now, it seems to me that everybody's got anxiety. And and, and we would love to pray for you at this time, especially if you've got sort of the medical anxiety. But we need to be praying for everybody right now. And I want all of us to get to a point where we can get free from our anxiety. And what Jesus does here should be a help to every single one of us at the moment. I think to get this, it's important, first of all, that we understand that what Jesus isn't doing is giving you and me a new rule. When he says, do not be anxious, and he says it three times, what he's not saying is, thou shalt not be anxious. And, and, you know, we can be like that sometimes, feeling anxious. Well, you must be lacking faith. You need to repent. It's not good enough. No, No, hold on. What Jesus isn't doing is giving us something else to be anxious about. So now we end up feeling anxious about the fact that we feel anxious. Oh, no, I'm anxious. Jesus said I shouldn't feel anxious. I feel anxious. I'm worried. What does that mean about me? What does that mean about my relationship with God? No, forget all of that. Just just put that all aside. What Jesus is doing is quite different here. What he's doing is lovingly pointing you and me towards freedom from anxiety and he does it by acknowledging our daily needs and our concerns and by pointing us beyond them to the bigger perspective so first he does acknowledge the foreground of our lives when he says don't be anxious about your life and what you'll eat and what you're drinking about your body and what you wear so there's a list of things he mentions he mentions food and drink which let's be honest is a real issue right now he mentions our bodies which I guess at the moment is also relevant when we think first about our health but it's more than that isn't it at the moment I know people are concerned about things like haircuts and you know the return of mum and dad haircuts which could be quite worrying for many um, and, and makeup and and deodorant and shower gel and things like that these are real concerns that we've got at the moment and then Jesus goes on from that and and he begins to mention something else he says in verse 27 which of you by being anxious can add a single hour to his span of life so Jesus adds death to the list as well that's quite a list of things totally up to date to what we're experiencing right now so relevant front and center of our lives these things And although this is a unique situation for most of us, it's definitely worth us being aware that for many people around the world, these things are genuine concerns and worries they live with all the time. For us, this is probably going to be a blip in our society, something that we will remember for the rest of our lives, but hopefully not something we'll be living with forever. But for many people, this is just daily life. They have these concerns. And whether for you this is an ongoing thing or a temporary thing, the same applies. Jesus acknowledges that these things are real issues for us. And then he points to this beautiful background. And and what he does, he first, he points us, I think, to two different backgrounds. The first background he points to is one that is around us all the time and we often don't notice. And the second background is like an eternal perspective that we may not get unless it's revealed to us by somebody. So let's start with the first of those two backgrounds. The, the background that's visible and is around us all the time and that we don't often notice. And to do that, I want to put the painting back up again. And when I put this up earlier, hopefully you spotted it was a painting of a tree. But did you spot the sheep? I'll be honest with you, when I first put it up, I didn't notice them at all. To the left of the tree, there's a little field and in that field there are sheep. And I expect most of us didn't notice them either. And Jesus does the equivalent of that. He points his listeners to some details all around them from the natural world. He says to them, look at the birds of the air. And I can imagine Jesus delivering this. He was delivering it actually seated on the side of a mountain with people seated below him. That's what we learn that from the Bible. And he says, look at the birds of the air. He probably gestures to them. And I can imagine his listeners looking up around going, oh yeah, yeah, there's birds around. Hadn't noticed them until you pointed them out, but yep, they're there. Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns your heavenly father feeds them it's pretty good look at the birds god feeds them 
And then he goes on, consider the lilies of the field. They don't toil or spin, yet I tell you, even Solomon, great King Solomon, in all his glory, was not arrayed like one of these. And so Jesus acknowledges our real needs and our real anxieties, knowing that we need all these things. And then he points people to this background. He says, stop looking at the foreground of your immediate problems. Look at the world around you. Look at the bigger picture. And he points people to the birds flying over and the flowers, perhaps, that were growing next to him. And that's a perspective we can easily overlook. Do you know why we've been inside in quarantine that spring has come? Have you noticed that the gardens are full of daffodils? Have you noticed that, that God has blessed our world again with sunshine and, and warmth and the grass is growing again and the trees are getting leaves on them and, and blossom is appearing on the trees? Make sure you get out for that daily exercise. It, it's beautiful out there. Go and enjoy it. But of course, it's very easy for Jesus to say, well, look at the birds. God provides for them. Look at the flowers. God provides for them. So he'll provide for you. It'll be fine. And we can look at that and think, well, hold on a minute. I can't eat worms like a bird. I need more than soil and and water and and sunshine like a flower. I actually need God to provide for me and and I don't live like they do. And what's God going to do for me? Now, listen, the point is this. Here's the point. Jesus wasn't saying, you know, birds do fine because they only eat worms and and flowers do fine because they only need sunshine. Those things are true. The point that Jesus is making is that there is an even bigger perspective, which is that God is the one who provides for them. Birds and flowers have a provider who meets their needs you and I, we have a provider as well. In all our anxieties, we need to look beyond just ourselves to provide. We need to look to the bigger provider. If you're just looking to yourself and thinking, how can I get through this? No wonder you're feeling anxious. You don't have to do it like that. There is a heavenly father who loves and looks after us. And that's the one that Jesus points us to. That is that second bigger perspective, the hidden perspective, the eternal perspective that we wouldn't even know about unless it was revealed to us. And Jesus wants us to look to that. He says, your heavenly father cares for the birds and he cares for the flowers and he will care for you as well. You are not on your own. You have a heavenly father. And Jesus wants us to know that. As we see that this, this, this horrible situation in front of us causing anxiety in the foreground of our lives, he says, look at the bigger perspective. Look around you. Look at the birds. Look at the trees. Look at the flowers. God meets their needs and God will meet yours and God will meet mine. Look, we've got a heavenly father and he's over us. And he has this wonderful line, are you not of much more value than they are? You see, Jesus wants us to know God's love and care. God will care for us. That eternal background perspective, it changes everything and frees us from anxiety and it it gives perspective to the foreground of our lives. And so in our painting, if I can bring that back up again, I wonder what that big perspective might be represented by. I guess in some ways we could liken it to the mountains and the skies in the the picture. There's this whole background that's huge that gives perspective. It's the mountains, it's the skies, it's distant from us, it's lofty, it's way above us, it's beyond us. That's all true, and God can be like that. But there's one other detail here. As I was preparing this talk, I felt God nudge me to go and look again at that perspective on the picture. Go and zoom in on the, on the picture. And so I did. I got it on my computer, and I zoomed in. And when I zoomed in around those sheep, I spotted another detail. And I want to zoom this picture in for you right now. Can you see at the base of the tree, there are sheep, but can you see something else? Or can I say someone else? Hidden against that tree in silhouette. Zoom in and you can see his outline. There's a shepherd amongst those sheep. There is someone there looking after those sheep closely. God watches over our lives, but he doesn't watch us from a distant mountain or from the skies far away. He wants us to know that he is right there amongst us. The good Shepherd. That's what Jesus said of himself. I am the good shepherd and he is watching over us and I know my sheep and my sheep know me. God is not far from us in this time. He's not miles away where we can't access him. He's close to us. He's standing amongst us. He's right here with us and he can help us to defeat our anxieties. The sheep are not alone. We're not alone. Jesus stands amongst us. Do you know that God is not far from you? God is closer than you think and he's available for you to talk to him. In this crisis, he's close to you. Any time of life, he's close to you. If you're feeling ill, he's close to you. In an ambulance, being taken to hospital, he's close to you. Being left behind, worried about a loved one, he's close to you. Finding there's no food on the supermarket shelves, he is close to you. He will guide you, protect you, care for you in every situation. And Jesus, our good shepherd, invites every one of us to put our trust in him, like the sheep in that picture are trusting the shepherd under the tree. Perhaps 
but you've never made that step of putting your trust in Jesus. Why don't you do it today? During a time like this, I don't know how any of us are going to face our anxieties and deal with them without knowing God in our lives, without knowing his presence, his, his purpose for us, that he loves us and cares for us. And every person alive, you need to know that Jesus is for you. He invites you to come to him. He'll never turn away anyone that comes to him. You can come to him with all your needs and concerns and know that he will meet them right now. He will help you defeat all your anxiety. More than ever right now, we need to put our trust in Jesus. We may not have everything that we want in this time, but we're not going to want for everything that we need. And God is not only interested in our physical needs, do you know he also cares about our eternal spiritual needs as well? That's another perspective we need to get to understand our lives properly. This world is not all there is. There is a life to come beyond it. Even if we die, we will live. Jesus said, I'm the good shepherd, I lay down my life for my sheep, and that's what he did on the cross. Jesus was crucified to pay the price for our wrongdoing, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him might not perish, but have everlasting life. When we put our trust in Jesus, we receive forgiveness and eternal life. Now, I'm not saying that faith in God will make you or I immune from this disease. No, no, no. What it will do is make us immune from the greater disease, the disease of sin and ultimate death. When Jesus came into this world, he came into a world that was affected by a virus. A virus called sin, something that actually affects every single person on the planet. And Jesus died to be the cure for that. He died to pay the price for our sin. There is this eternal perspective to our lives. I I will pray for protection on my family and on myself at this time. Together we want to be praying for our town, we want to be praying for, for our church, and we can have a confidence that God is over us and nothing's going to be outside of his care or concern. Nothing's going to happen that he doesn't allow. He's watching over us. But we also need to know that death is not the end. That Jesus has promised us resurrection and eternal life. He died so that we don't have to fear death anymore. Let's not live as though death was the worst thing that could possibly happen to us. Let's live with faith for a resurrection to come. And let's defeat our anxieties through faith in Christ. There's a promised resurrection and that perspective changes everything. Now, you might be watching this and wondering right now, well, where is God? The answer is this, he's right in the midst of us. He's amongst us, caring for us, interceding for us. Jesus said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. Jesus doesn't run away when a virus comes. Jesus isn't in quarantine. Jesus isn't hiding away in case he catches it. He is with you right now in your homes, in your heart, in your life, in your anxious thoughts. Jesus is there and he wants to help you to defeat those anxieties through a faith, a faith in him. He doesn't promise you immunity, but he does say you do not have to walk through this on your own. And knowing he's with us, knowing there's someone to care for us, just lifts the anxiety. It gives us strength and wisdom for each day. And do you know, there's another promise in the Bible as well. A promise that one day this world will be restored. Do you know this world is not as God intended it to be? Sin and, 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 and all the stuff we've done wrong has spoiled this creation that we live in. But the promise of the Bible is that one day Jesus will return, that his kingdom will come. There'll be new heavens and a new earth. There'll be no more sorrow or sickness or sadness or death. God says he will wipe away every tear from our eyes and we'll live with him eternally in resurrected bodies under new heavens on a new earth. That's the promise of the Bible, the promise that Jesus points us to. And we need to know that, especially in a time like this. We need to know that death is not the end. And knowing that can really help free us from our anxiety. And it's in the light of that perspective, in the light of that that great big picture, that Jesus can say to us, therefore, do not be anxious, saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For the pagans, by which he means people who just don't know God or have that perspective on their lives, the pagans seek after these things. And your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But instead, don't seek after them. Instead, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you as well. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. The call of Jesus on you and me at this time is not to be seeking after all these things in the foreground of our lives, but to be seeking first the kingdom of God. But what does that mean practically for us right now? What does it mean when I'm stuck inside my home? How do I seek the kingdom of God? Two ways. First thing is this. We need to remember that our true home and hope is in heaven, in God's kingdom. Let's 
first seek the kingdom of God by setting our minds and our focus there. Let's set our minds on the world to come. Let's set our minds on God's kingdom. Let's not put our ultimate hope in this life. Let's put it in the next life. That perspective really helps to free us from anxiety today. After all, the Bible tells us that we're just aliens and strangers in this world, that we're citizens of heaven. That's where our citizenship is. And we await a saviour from there, the Lord Jesus Christ. So the first way to seek the kingdom of God is to remember that our true home and our true hope lies beyond this world. The second way is really practical. is to demonstrate the love of Jesus to the people around us. And we can do that in all sorts of ways in this crisis. Let's remember the church was made for a time like this. Your faith, my faith was made for a time like this. To live is Christ, to die is gain. We can't lose. Let's love God and let's love our neighbours as well. Let's find ways to show them the love of God. Now, right now, that isn't by going round there. That isn't showing them God's love. Right now, we're told to stay at home and keep the virus from spreading. So don't go knocking on your neighbours' doors. But there may be ways that you can connect with them. Is there a a local support group that you can be part of who are helping to collect and deliver prescriptions and food to people that are isolated? Can you be part of that? Is there a group that you can WhatsApp? I I was chatting to someone from the church this week. The whole road's got a WhatsApp group and they're now in more contact than they've ever had. Uh, Hearing these stories and thinking people from our church are connecting with people. They're loving God and they're loving their neighbour and that is how we bring the kingdom of God. That is how we seek first the kingdom of God, knowing that God will meet all our other needs. Love God, love the people around us. But can I be clear, this message is not a message to try harder. We don't seek the kingdom of God by really trying hard to be a better person. We do it by letting the life of Jesus that's within us transform us and flow out. You see, there was one person in all of history who perfectly fulfilled all of this. There was one person who wasn't anxious about his life, but trusted his father perfectly. There was one person who sought first the kingdom of God in every way. There was one person who loved the Lord his God with all his heart, soul, mind and strength and truly loved his neighbour as himself. And that person was Jesus. And his life is in us and he wants to flow through us. In Jesus, God came down from heaven to earth. He walked with us, sat with us, ate with us, lived the life we lived, tempted as we are tempted, yet he never sinned. And he died on the cross in our place to pay the price for our wrongdoing the innocent for the guilty the sinless for the sinful and when we put our trust in Jesus we receive forgiveness from God and the gift of eternal life and it changes everything it just shifts our whole perspective on life this world is no longer our ultimate home my citizenship is elsewhere you see Jesus in that passage talked about how God will provide for us but do you know the greatest provision in that passage the greatest ultimate provision is Jesus. He's God's great provision for us. He is the one that fulfilled everything perfectly. And what he won is given to us for free when we put our faith in him. He already sought the kingdom of God well. He did it perfectly. Everything that's credited to him gets credited to us by faith in Jesus. Let's let the life of Jesus flow through us. Let's not be striving and become anxious about whether we're doing enough or whether we've got this right. Let's not be anxious about food and drink and clothing and health. Let's put our trust in Jesus. Trust that he's got our eternity safe in his hands, that our lives are lived against his background, that we will be resurrected one day. And let's trust him that his life in us means that we really can be good news to the people around us, that we really can show the love of God to those he puts in front of us every day. Let's have a faith and confidence. Those of you who particularly are out and about contacting people, those involved in the National Health Service, I pray that God will give you the ability to demonstrate Jesus to people, not by sheer willpower, but by the strength and love of Jesus and the Holy Spirit within you, flowing from you to others. You are the light of the world. You are the salt of the earth. God has put you here for this time. So if we really want to get free of anxiety, the way we do it, it's not about trying harder. It's not trying to have more faith. It's about taking the faith we do have and putting that faith in the one who already did it for us. The only one who ever loved God perfectly and ever loved his neighbour as much as himself. The only one who ever sought the kingdom of God first. That's Jesus. What he won is available to us. And that kingdom resurrection life can flow through you and through me. And it can free us from anxiety and help us be focused instead on God's eternal kingdom. So I want to pray. And I'm going to pray right now, first of all, for God's freedom from anxiety for our lives and his provision and protection over us. Would you pray with me? Lord Jesus, I thank you for your great love and care for us. Thank you that God is not distant from us like the mountains and the clouds and the sky.
Thank you that he is with us and stands amongst us. Jesus, thank you that you are with us. You promised, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. You said, I will be with you always to the very end of the age. Jesus, thank you that you're a good shepherd. You don't run away when times of plague and difficulty come. Lord, in the midst of this crisis with this virus, you stand with us. Jesus, I thank you. Lord, I pray for your protection over our lives. I pray for your provision for every need that we have. Lord, would you protect our lives individually and our families, protect our church, protect our town as well. Jesus, we want your presence to be shown. We want your glory to be shown in this time. Lord Jesus, would you shine forth from us and amongst us. Shine your light into our hearts and then shine from us to the world around us. Make us a great example in this time. And Jesus, I pray for everyone who is suffering with anxiety right now and fear right now. Would you free them, Lord Jesus, I pray. Help us to see our lives with the eternal perspective that you are for us. That even if we die, we will live. That there is a life to come. That we're citizens of heaven. Free us from our current anxiety and help us to walk in faith before you, I pray. And Lord, I pray for those working in health services and education, in pharmacies and in refuse collection. Lord, I pray for our postmen and our shop workers and everybody else, Lord. There's so many different people out and about doing good things to keep the country going. Lord, would you protect them? I pray you give them the courage each day to go out and may they shine forth the love of Jesus that you've put in their hearts. I, I just want to pray one more prayer. If you've never put your trust in Jesus... There's a moment that you could do that right now. Why don't you pray with me as well? In fact, let's all do that. Lord Jesus, thank you that you died on the cross to pay the price for my wrongdoing. Jesus, I put my trust in you right now. Lord, would you forgive me for my sin? Would you come and be Lord of my life? Lord Jesus, I want that eternal life. I want the certainty of life beyond the grave. I want to know that if I die, it's not the end and that I am safe in your hands. So Jesus, in faith... I commit my life to you. I put my trust in you. Amen. I couldn't think of a better way to finish today than for us to do something that we don't often do as a church together, to be fair, because we're not particularly a traditional church. I'd like us all to pray the Lord's Prayer together. So if you've been listening along with this at home, I'd encourage you to pray, I'd encourage you to pray it out loud as I do. The words are going to come up on the screen. I'm going to lead us through. But let me encourage you, wherever you are, to pray it out loud with me as well. It's the Lord's Prayer. It's a wonderful prayer, and I have felt more drawn to it than ever during this time. You know, you can use it when you're washing your hands. If you want to time 20 seconds, pray the Lord's Prayer. It's just about the right length. But I'm going to pray it. The words are superb for us right now. So let's pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Hey, thank you so much for listening to us today. I hope you've enjoyed it. What a wonderful bit of good news Jesus has given us that we can face our anxieties. We can live free of them at this time. We can know his love and care and perspective over our lives. He really is with us and for us. So God bless you. Wherever you are, whatever you're facing at the moment, God bless you, your lives and your family at this time. Hey, we are going to be back again next Sunday and our preach will be up online again. Do make sure you check in and you listen. We're also here every day at four o'clock on our website and our Facebook page. We're posting daily encouragements on Monday to Saturday. Do join those, catch those, listen to those. We want to encourage you and be with you at this time. I want you to know that Welcome Church is with you and for you at this time as well. Thank you so much for listening. I'm going to hand back now to our Welcome Church band. There's another wonderful worship song coming. I want to encourage you to enjoy that, dig into God, and uh, I'll see you again next week. Thanks so much for listening. In the morning you sing over me And I receive your mercy Your faithfulness is clear to see It's constant every day In the morning In the morning you sing over me And I receive your mercy Your faithfulness 
is good to see oh, It's constant every day Every breath I breathe an invitation To believe you are creating Something good The this season doesn't tell my story I know you move mountains for me You're just that good So I'll give thanks to God When I don't have enough Cause he's more than enough And he knows what I need So I'll give thanks to God When I don't have enough Cause he's more than enough And he knows what I need He knows, he knows what I need He does, he does In the silence I choose to believe As a church, we are here for you. And we just want to encourage you to connect well with Welcome Church at this time. We are with you and for you. There's different ways you can connect. The first way is by joining the Welcome Church Facebook group and by liking and following the Welcome Church Facebook page. On there, you can enjoy Welcome Church online, daily encouragements, um, Zoom prayer meetings, and lots and lots of other things too. Even if you don't normally go on Facebook, let me encourage you to get involved at this time. You can also visit our website, allwelcome.uk, where there's lots of information there for you as well. Anything at all that you need, 
please email us care at allwelcome.uk. We are here for you. Let me encourage you, do stay well connected with us. We're here to support you through this time. Thank you so much for joining us for Welcome Church Online. Do join us again next Sunday at 9am, 11am or 4pm. God bless you.